right. Olympic torch. The Olympic torch and Shelby's carrying it and we're going to be carrying it into town. This is day 310. Three hundred and ten Nelson BC. Beautiful day. So we're just about ready to go right now. There's Shelby's mom and Constable Bank and Bev's husband Emery. And Bev is right there. Say hi Bev. Hi. <laughs> So what, um, what I'm going to do is um, we're going to get Shelby to pass the torch to the mayor, and then uh, so we're going to get each one of these. That story. Thank you, Shelby. You don't remember me. It's also John Murray. But it, 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 after personal touch, because I've known you since you were this high. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really pleased that you're here to be able to pass this on to me. I understand the importance of it. Thank you. Well, we can just pass the torch along now. John, thank you. I've known you since we were this high. <laughs> <laughs> and this wide, yeah, right. Thank you. I'm getting to know you better. <laughs> okay, so now if we can all squeeze in to get a nice little photo shot here. All right. Move on the side here. I gotta line you up from left and right. I gotta figure that out. Now, this must be a first to have all three people in the party. So a smile on their face. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going to over that side. I know, I don't know. I'm just what kidding.
appreciate what you're doing because of bringing the understanding to people because it is everybody understanding how the transplant program works and the fact that it needs all of us to sign up that makes organs available when uh, they're in need. So in, in the absence of what you're doing, none of what we do would work. In fact, what we do follows the, the awareness issue. And Blair's right.
you could organize a press conference for Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. And I said, oh, well, my God, that there's, a whole, there's a weekend and then there's only two days. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do. But I, I'm really pleased. You know, we've got the media and we have our politicians and, and we have our transplant recipients and, and, uh, and Jim Murray is here. And, um, <coughs> I, I, and I don't know. I, I, all I can say is it's, it's so important. And I, I was just blown away when I became aware yesterday that this is National um, Donor Awareness Week in Canada. And honestly, I didn't even know that. And here it is happening. You know, I was able to, to have an active part right here in Nelson. So uh, I'm really grateful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Joel, would you like to have a few words? Uh, sure. Um, I've actually worked a lot with the BC Transplant Society after my I had a heart transplant in 1996. And uh, I spent a couple of years in Vancouver recovering uh, from all of it uh, as somebody who was sort of snatched from the dead. Um, and I know in the, in the room here, I don't know all of the people that have transplants, but there, there are some, and there's actually at least one person who was waiting for the transplant. And uh, um, I just want to say, that, yes, it is, it is national. I thought that George, in a sense, was running for the donor families, he was running for the actual recipients of his organs. Because um, in, in the whole process, people often say to me, it's, oh, it's very brave of you to have a heart transplant. Or, you know, and I say, no, the brave person is the donor family. Those are the people that really uh, put themselves on the line. And, that, and any of you who have experienced the death of your family, uh, you know how emotionally involved in sick, I was asking to take praying for a miracle. And uh, for a while there, I didn't think I was getting an answer, but I think when the uh, transplant uh, actually happened, I realized that the, what I thought the miracle was going to be was that I would just get better. And actually, what the miracle was to get a heart transplant. And that's, that's what I So thank you, George, for your report. Uh, I certainly wouldn't walk across Canada, but uh, <laughs> I'm glad someone is, because it is organ donor. into this thing at the last minute because um, I represent the people that are waiting. Um, I've been waiting a year now and the awareness is fabulous what George is bringing to this and Shelby as an inspiration for trans recipients and Joel as far as the quality of life and um, just everything. I don't have a lot to say but I'm just thankful for all that's happening. My youngest daughter, halfway through grade 12, many years ago, uh, became ill. And it was kidney failure, a defect from birth, which was never picked up. Uh, all the kids have been healthy, touch wood. And uh, so I've experienced what the transplant organization means. And it's really gratifying to know that it has advanced so far in the last 10 or 15 years. Brenda was first dialyzing and she had to drive to trail every third day and hook up on, di on the dialysis machine. And I think it was acetone, if I'm not mistaken, that they used to flush and she would be instantly sick. And when you're looking at your 17-year-old daughter who is uh, going through a terrible, terrible time, it affects the whole family, there's no doubt about it. And at those days, I believe the percentage of success was about 35, 35 to 40% success rate. 
And with any transplant, it's major surgery, no doubt about it. And so she made a pact with, uh, she's very strong in her religion, she made a pact with God that until it was up to 85 or 35 or 85 percent that she wasn't going to get on the list at all. And uh, she went through some terrible times for three years in the trail and then finally, um, I think it was almost self-destruction. Uh, the police knew me by, by first name from the speeding ticket she was getting. And so we put a machine in our own home here in Nelson, and my wife and uh, an old boyfriend who she rejected everybody turned up on the scene, and they went to Vancouver and trained and at the uh, uh, Kidney Foundation, trained on the home machine. And we had decided that, uh, this was in 1984, we had decided we were going to have a family reunion on our summer home Comox out on the beach where we don't even have running water. So they trained on the portable machine on our way through from Nelson to, to Comox. Anyway, the uh, outcome of that, uh, another three years later, she and her fiance decided they wanted to move to Seashell. Well, I did a quick bit of research and I gather Seashell is quite bad for black water. And black water on a kidney machine is not fun. Um, anyway, she, uh, we moved her down there. I took a friend of mine, a plumber, and with me and everything. I set her all up, trying to make sure we had the water filtered and so on. This is all at our expense, but uh, what, what don't you spend for your own children? There's, there's no, no doubt about it. And uh, one Saturday morning, at about uh, 11 in the morning, I was at work. My wife and I have worked together in our own business down here for about 28 years. And, uh, phone rings and Jean answers it and it's Brenda. She's phoning from Seashell. They have a transplant. I have to be there in six hours and you guys get down there before I go under. I mean, she knows that Mother and I drive too fast, but that's <laughs> asking a bit too much. So I made her a promise <coughs> that we would be there when she came out. So after we got down to Vancouver, it was very early in the morning, four or five o'clock, and they took us through the labyrinth tunnels underneath Vancouver General. They have to take a guide with you, otherwise you'd be there forever. And while we were waiting for Brenda to, to wake up, um, we were standing in the recovery room, and I was looking out the window, and I said to the nurse, I said, boy, the skyline has sure changed since I was here. She said, oh, when was that? I said, 1949. My father was uh, went blind, and they did a brain operation on him and gave him one chance a thousand. And I said, you know, all you could see was the, was the hotel, basically. I don't think even the hydro building was there then. Anyway. Brenda came around and was pleased to see us, took care of the, the nursing community, period, and the Kidney Foundation. Um, she is now celebrating her 14th year. She is finding, uh, she's telling Shelby that uh, she's having a little bit of what they call uh, chronic rejection. When she says acute, dad's going to go into orbit, but uh, a little bit of chronic rejection. But 14 years is pushing the window for a transplant. But she's had excellent health. Uh, seven years ago, her husband and she went down to Alabama for a holiday, which they justly deserved. They had been trying to, and I'm not criticizing the health system or the, everybody does, but uh, they had been trying to adopt. My daughter is five foot two. And uh, they came back from their holiday and uh, on a Thursday, and they were here on the follow on that same Saturday showing us all their pictures, and they were so happy about this holiday, and she said, yeah, we came home pregnant. Well, I can still see the look on my wife's face. You know, oh my God, here we go. We now have, I now have my daughter, and a seven-year-old granddaughter. <coughs> and that's thanks to the kidney foundation and the transplant. And every one of my children, and I think all of my in-laws, have all signed a transplant card. And I can speak for myself it was hard, but Brenda said goodbye to her mother. I eat for this much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Okay, George.
This is exactly what we want to portray to the country. This is an, this would be an excellent opportunity for promoting uh, the importance of organ and tissue donations. What better time than uh, three campaign parties fighting each other for their seats and coming together on this issue? This is the type of promotion that we're, we've been seeking from day one when we started right to the end. What we wanted to do was to raise the level of consciousness to every Canadian about this issue because it hasn't been raised to the level where it should be uh, for a number of years. And, and the people that are, are suffering are the people that are on the waiting list. Now, the shortage is not a reflection on our Canadian people because every single person that I've talked to along the way, every single Canadian that I've talked to along the way has a desire to donate their organs. All of them do. We have to look at our process. We have to look at are we giving every Canadian the opportunity and education to know exactly what to do because a lot of them are confused. Now, every province has a different system. Every uh, th There was no national lobby until uh, uh, Canada, until uh, recently. Uh, and we need to look at the other thing too. Let's look at, the, at this at an individual point of view. Uh, we have a system right now where we're encouraging people to donate their organs by uh, signing a donor card expressing this wish to their family, because it's the family that makes the uh, final decision. So expressing the wish to the family is very, very important. But let's really look at this at, at an individual level, and, and we've got to ask ourselves a couple of questions here while, while I'm explaining the process. Now, after we decide to, to sign our donor card and we're expressing our wish uh, to our family, and uh, an organ's going to be available usually after a tragedy. That means that the family is going to be approached during a very difficult time. They're probably going to be in a lot of shock, grief stricken, and they're not going to be in their right state of mind to make a very important decision. Even though they probably supported it a week before, and they said, well, now what? We're going to support your decision. But they're being approached at a very difficult time, at a very weak time. And there's 10 lives that are dependent on that decision. Okay. Now, I'm saying this because I've had a lot of families that were in that position that have talked to me and, and said that they said no at that moment. And they would have said yes before, and they would have said yes afterwards, and they're all living with a lot of regret right now. A lot of regret. And, and, and they wish that they weren't asked at that moment. So I've been asking Canadians, how do you feel that your wish, this very precious wish, that, and it is an awesome wish because, it, you know, one decision, you not only save up 10 people's lives, but you're bringing a lot of joy to their families and their friends. We're looking at one decision that positively affects over 1,000 people. This is a very important decision. So if we're asking individuals, how do you feel about the fact that your family is, you know, hoping that with the utmost good intentions, they're going to say yes, they're going to, you know, but they're approached in, in, when they're not in the right state of mind. Your wish would get carried out and be less dependent on my personal to than the only family that saved my life, who up to today, The only means of communication is through a screen letter. But after waking up from that surgery and receiving that precious gift of life, I immediately had an overwhelming desire to say thank you to that donor family. And a letter wasn't enough for me. So that's why I decided to walk. 10,000 kilometers for the next 600 days and bring my story and bring this message to every Canadian that I meet and to, to try and inspire the media who can play a very important part in all this as they can reach a lot of people with their positive stories. And also, and just as important, to reach all three levels of our government 
so that we can get to inspire them to make this issue more a priority on their agenda. And if we can do that, then I'm sure we can be on our way to a much higher success when it comes to our rate of organ emissions. At present, we are very happy to say that we have been doing that. Since I started this trek on uh, June the 20th of 2008 Toronto, and reaching today, which is day 311, uh, I can happily say that we've been able to inspire each province, <coughs> each provincial government, into, into taking more initiative steps to make this a priority on their agendas. And this has been a campaign of municipalities as we're visiting 500 cities and towns across this country. We've been able to inspire each community with this very important message. And most recently, we were able to reach the health minister, the federal health minister, Alan Rock, who made an announcement two and a half weeks ago in Edmonton stating that uh, he is going to take the steps in, in making organ and tissue donations a priority in our country. So we, we are very happy with some of the things that we have been accomplishing thus far. Even the road in trying to accomplish this is quite challenging. I can't help but look at the day that I had my funeral planned and thought that God wasn't going to be around me. Awesome decision, which we're calling the ultimate decision, the ultimate gift, and that was to donate their loved ones' organs so that not only I had a chance to live, but five others. And that is the reason that keeps me on the road and that I'm determined to finish this trip. I want to thank everybody for listening to me, and um, we have been really enjoying Nelson's been here, and just to speak on behalf of my road manager, uh, uh, David uh, Reitzman, who joined me, by the way, uh, a month ago, uh, and this was on a moment's notice, because I just finished losing my uh, fifth road crew. He dropped everything at home in, in Victoria and took the next plane and, and met me and, and stated that uh, he was going to be my guide through uh, BC, and he has been so far. I 